So this is uh, Advanced Steel uh, 2020 and we have the Grey Tech BIM designers for stairs and railings installed. Uh, it comes with its own dedicated ribbon panel um, in here. So we have separate sub panels across here focusing upon straight stairs, balanced stairs, railings and we have a new tools one as well. So how does this work? What it is about? So straight stairs these are basically focused upon stairs that have rectangular landings and obviously straight flights so two quarter landings in this case for a three flight configuration if you were going to a two flight you have the uh, right turn left turn obviously uh, a dog leg as well and a u shape or sometimes referred to as a switchback so these different configurations can be applied uh, there's also a single flight option as well which is just a single flight on its own can be quite useful because you can add landings on to each end of it and there is a, a single flight actually which is split with an intermediate half landing on it as well um, the balance stair uh, sometimes this would probably be termed more as a kite winder stair so there's several different variations of that as well and that proves quite popular depending on which country you're in and again you've got different options there for two uh, flights or three flights and then you get the usual options of a uh, sort of switchback or a dog leg type arrangement um, obviously the railings sort of probably speak for themselves here the ball post hand railing is based upon the industrialized railing standards uh, for applying ball post railings in sort of oil and gas industries uh, chemical plants that we see uh, especially in my, my country and similarly key clamp is a similar application which uses tube and uh, a pipe type fitting which will go between the various tube elements to form the railing uh, we have our own standard railing tool which has the ability to add in glass panels and clamps etc and framing features that are available we have our own wall mounted handrail macro which can be quite good because now as of 2020 you can actually use that and align it to the top of the rail to the actual nosing sort of hand uh, rail line that you need so if the handrail needs to be 900 mil above the top of the uh, rise of the stair the line of the tow line of the stair you can insert it to that and adjust it and combined with that we also have our special part manager which is a new tool for 2020 which enables us to access details relative to ball post and key clamps and glass fittings so you can actually add in your own bespoke supplier so if you were under here there, there is actually options in here to add a new producer so should you uh, go to a different supplier that you have to get your particular type of tube clamp pipe clamp however you term it you can add in your own range here as a producer and then you can add your own elements under here by pressing the plus button and providing that you've obviously got a suitable aces solid model available that can also be stored and added in to the symbols library inside advanced steel so this is quite a new feature uh, available this year uh, makes it a lot easier for people to add and create their own pipe fittings etc glass clamp types and obviously your own ball post hand railing configurations um, so sort of to focus the primary focus today was to try and look at the, uh, the straight stairs arrangements so I'm going to take a little look here at the switchback arrangement um, it's quite easy obviously I have to have some form of setting out I would normally be pulling something from an architect or an engineer I would probably have stripped that down to get the bare minimum that I need for the setting out to give me some idea of where I'm coming from and to and and literally I am just picking the sort of the turn points at the base of the stair and then I'm going up into the vertical elevation here to pick the overall height of the stair with those points uh, indicated I decide left or right and then obviously it will introduce a stair into the model so it will just pull that in as one element it will make an assumption based upon what it thinks should be the best configuration for the stair that's necessarily not what the user would require so there is the ability to change this you will see that there is a new dialogue and interface for this year it's called a GUI uh, but um, basically it's the dialogue boxes a lot of different arrangement with tabs and sub tabs broken down um, normally I would probably start here by adjusting 
my landing extension values here so if I do that you'll probably see this all just over on the left here and I'm going to do a similar thing here with obviously the next flight so this one has two landing extensions because obviously it's in the middle between the two quarter landings so we just adjust that in there and then what we would do is we would then come back to just do the last one here so obviously you have to understand the criteria that you're drawing the stair to which you've normally determined from the 2d plan uh, or the information that you've been given so even with that it's adjusted the stair and we can still see it's not quite right the configuration is not coming in quite right as we want it um, it's not giving us a correct stride figure here so the stride figure is actually indicated under these you're very useful secondary sub tabs here we can see that the stride is normally we're using this formula here 2r plus g which is a very standard formula available use throughout the world so these very informative little tabs give you an idea of where your stair is falling within the range of stuff and obviously the constraints that are being used so we've set the stride obviously at 610 here which is a minimum that we would use in my particular country and obviously we can see that's coming out of that so what we can do is we can actually decide that we want to override that just by unticking the automatic fit box and typically I would just come in and just adjust the number of treads here so if you watch I'm just doing the little checkbox and you can see the stair altering on the left hand side of the screen as I do this So it just takes a, a few seconds to get this adjusted to what you need and then quite quickly the stair is in place so that is the fundamentals of the basic free flight stair that are available uh, what you can do is obviously you can control other elements that exist within the within the dialog box um, so typically you might want to alter the stringer okay you might want to control the positioning so you can do that here but more importantly also you can control the input around the landing area as well so I'm just changing the input in there and I'm just putting 20 and you should see this actually adjust on the on the outer string around the landings and that does apply to both landings as well not just the lower one you can ask for identical stringers by checking that as well and that will apply the same variables on the inside and the outside uh, and that can be quite useful when you're trying to use features like at the bottom of the stair down in here so I want to adjust this uh, parameter in here to zero which will give a nice little sort of snake cut on the bottom of the stair here for the stair footing and again you have different arrangements as to what you want to do if you wanted a vertical leg you could adjust it uh, the dialog interface is slightly different from what people would be used to in normal advanced steel we tend to be going for more of a visual representation using an icon based system so that, that sort of configures the stair quite quickly. Um, what you can also do in this uh, situation is even if this was part of a stair tower, you do have the option to add in additional landing. So if you want to, you can put an additional landing on at the bottom here by checking the box and it will change the arrangement at the bottom of the stair and put a new landing in place here as well. And similarly, obviously you can do the same at the top just by checking the box here it will place that in place so if you needed for example to change the parameters of this again this can be adjusted within the system here so if you want to put this in down to 100 millimeters it should adjust or in that case I put 10 which was not good but you can see that it moved and straight away you can see that it's wrong so you can adjust this back to what it needs to be um, similarly obviously if you want to change the the length of the landing you can change the length of it here so if you want to you could make this go a lot longer or a lot wider sorry so obviously you probably wouldn't want to do that but you never know um, so it depends on how or what criteria you've been given so that's changing the width between the two stringer plates so and this is obviously going to change the other the length actually across here so I'm going to make this uh, three meters just to show that it extend over towards the left hand side so simply you know you might have a, a stair that you're coming up and then you've got a long walk over to another exit or something so you could adjust that in in the system here um, so that is the the basis of the the stair configuration uh, for that particular type all types do apply um, similarly we can do this as a, a dog leg stair so again I come back here and I'm just going to pick this arrangement in here 
I'm going to pick obviously the start point and then the first turn point and then the second turn point here obviously the last one and then the points to indicate the overall rise of the stair so again it will pull something in um, now depending on what you want to do in the system you can also use a feature within advanced steel uh, and the BIM designer actually we have our own library content here so you can select this and you can load that in to the stair before you actually start to do anything else now this will enable you to store configuration maybe for folded plate treads or uh, in this in this instance it's actually grating with a bolted arrangement on the stair so with a grate in the landing and obviously a configuration now all it's done is brought in the key parameters for that obviously you still need to go in and go back and control your setting out that you might require for each of these stairs okay so what I'm probably going to do here is I'm going to come back in again and I can see that I've got my automatic ergonomics is actually unticked because that's how I stored it but I can come in and start adjusting this in here so now we're into this dialogue we're starting to adjust the individual flight arrangements by adjusting the tread number so I'm just going to increment this up from sort of 8 up to 9 and then obviously the other one the last flight you can see is at 11 at a minute so I'm going to adjust that back down towards 9 to arrive at the configuration that I need for the staircase it takes a few minutes to do this uh, typically because there's a number of connections involved now so with that in place you can see that I've adjusted this now to have three, three flights at nine treads each and I've come back to my correct rise and going you can see that my stride is within the limits it's not gone red and it's also adjusted all the layout for the stair so I've used a different configuration to start with and basically put that into the system from here so there is obviously a lot more variables available within this uh, tool uh, that we will probably show in some more in-depth uh, explanations uh, and demonstrations via various blog posts etc we intend to do um, quickly just to sort of round this off you can obviously use different configurations of stair uh, this is actually drawn from using the single flight macro here I used the one flight stair at the start here and drew this as two separate flights uh, so I could make it as two individual flights and turn landings on at the top or the bottom if I so required so to make this uh, an individual little flight assembly stair so you don't necessarily have to do it all using the various multiple flight options that are available you could choose it to make it out of individual stairs so that you can add them into the model as you see fit um, so obviously there's another one here where I've done this as a, a two flight stair and, and actually what I've done is I've actually split that on the, on, the, on the level here I've actually split the stringer in the middle of the landing rather than doing it what I would probably do is the other one the other way it would probably do it as a complete welded assembly going up here so sometimes it depends on obviously how you can transport and erect things as to how you assemble stairs on site so again that, that is another couple of different variations that could be applied um, similarly it can be used also in conjunction with uh, we have a thing inside our power pack called the structure designer and this element that you see here this structure is actually a stair tower that I correctly created as a concept project and then put some landings in and then I quickly I've used the stair macro here to quickly insert a flight between the various landing levels so I'm using a combination of the great tech tools there to bring together the whole concept of doing stairs and supporting steel work